Hey, my name is Chris Brennan, and this is your year ahead horoscope and astrology forecast for the zodiac sign of Libra for the entire year of 2024. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So your main keywords this year to summarize Libra are self, relationship, health, money, learn, friends, career, and children. So these are some of the main topics that are going to be activated for you during the course of this year based on the transits. And I want to spend the rest of this video uh, expanding on that and talking about the specific transits that will activate different parts of your chart and different topics in your life. So I wanted to start first with the eclipses where we're going to see a continuation of an eclipse series that started last year in 2023 and it's going to continue on into 2024 and these eclipses are happening in your first house of self, mind, and body and your seventh house of relationships. So eclipses represent major beginnings and major endings in the area of life that they fall. So for many of you then, because this eclipse series is bouncing back and forth between your first house of self and your seventh house of relationships, part of the purpose of this time is figuring out how to balance your own personal needs um, as a person and, and what your goals and desires and wishes are versus the needs of other people that you're in relationships with, especially close personal one-on-one, -on -one, um, often romantic relationships. So you'll probably swing back and forth between putting more emphasis on yourself versus putting more emphasis on others during the course of this year at different points. And eventually the, the goal is to reach balance in the end. Uh, but with eclipses happening in your seventh house, sometimes this means if you're not in a relationship, it can indicate a major new relationship coming into your life, um, especially around the April time frame, which is when the eclipse in Aries will take place. Uh, for those of you that are in relationships already, sometimes it can indicate the end of a chapter in that relationship and the need to start a new chapter for some reason. Um, in some extreme instances, if a relationship has reached the end of its sort of life cycle, then eclipses can sometimes indicate the end of a relationship, which then will open you up and make space for other new ones to come into your life. Um, let's see, other things, focusing on mind, body, self, appearance, and other first house type topics are definitely the potential for the Libra eclipses, which will take place both in March and then again um, later in the, the year in early October. So pay attention to some of those topics because some of them may profoundly change your sense of self and who you are and how you appear to the world in some pretty significant ways. All right, so those are the eclipses that are taking place throughout the course of the year at different points. The next thing I wanted to move on to talking about is um, the Saturn transit and other transits happening in Pisces this year, which is going through your sixth house of work and health. So Saturn transits tend to represent challenges and often surmountable difficulties is my keyword for Saturn. And Saturn's meeting up with Neptune this year, especially around the June-July timeframe. And usually Neptune represents things that are nebulous or mysterious or, or that are like sort of like um, illusions, whereas Saturn represents the cold hard facts and reality and truth of things. So when you get these two together, you end up with um, a bit of a tension in this sector of your life, in this sector of your chart. So that's why my primary keyword for this transit is nebulous challenges surrounding work and health. So um, that's going to be part of what you're trying to work out this year. So when it comes to health, that means there may be some health issues coming up that you feel like you need to address. This doesn't always mean that it's an actual like crisis or something like that, but rather it could just be something where you're trying to put more um, routines into your life for health matters. You're trying to improve health slowly and incrementally. Um, the challenge will be balancing um, optimism and idealism with realism about what is within your, your capability of doing. Um, if there are any health things associated with this transit, it can be tricky because sometimes Neptune things are hard to get a grasp on and can be um, so nebulous that they're hard to pin down. So that may be part of the tension this year is trying to figure out um, where things are coming from and how to address them as one of the themes. 
So I think some of this will become a little bit more prominent in September when we're going to get the first eclipse in the sign of Pisces that will really put a spotlight on this area even more so than it was earlier in the year in especially June and July. So that's one area to pay attention to. Um, the sixth house can also pertain to work. So some of the issues that I just mentioned may relate to nebulous challenges surrounding work and the workplace. And especially if you find yourself in a sort of managerial position with subordinates, there could be some challenges um, that are kind of uh, nebulous with subordinates and dealing with them and some setbacks that you have to work on but then eventually overcome. Um, but all of that should be manageable. All right, so that is that transit through your sixth house this year, which is one of the more long-term ones that's that's going to be off and on this year. Um, the next one I want to focus on some more positive transits that are happening involving Jupiter. So one of them is this transit of Jupiter through your eighth house of shared resources, um, other people's money, and a Jupiter transit through your 8th house is actually quite positive because it indicates a period of growth and expansion in this area. And Jupiter is actually going to meet up with and conjoin Uranus uh, in the May time frame, like April-May time frame. And my main keyword for this is that it presents um, unexpected opportunities involving the resources of others. So for some people, this represents um, the resources of your partner. If you're in a long-term relationship, they may have some sort of sudden financial windfall or get um, a raise at work or have some sort of inheritance come their way, since the inheritance is definitely an eighth house topic that can come up. Um, but the eighth house also can be um, other people's money in general more broadly, even outside of your partner's finances. So sometimes this can involve things like taxes, debt, um, even investments, or other things like that um, that give you some sort of positive uh, period of growth and financial windfall at this time, especially ones that are unexpected or come from a sector that you didn't think of um, that sort of come out of nowhere. So the eighth house sometimes has to do with issues surrounding mortality. So in some instances, this could also mean something positive along those lines, which can mean things surrounding like an inheritance or some other scenario like that. So that transit's gonna be happening for the entire first half of the year um, and then culminating around the late April timeframe when Jupiter conjoins Uranus exactly. All right, so my other most positive transit for you this year is that Jupiter in June is going to move into the sign of Gemini, which is your ninth house of education, learning, philosophy, beliefs, religion, um, travel, and foreign countries and foreign places. So this is going to initiate a period of growth and learning and expansion when it comes to these topics in particular. So some people um, start learning new things, they take a, a new course of study at this time and they start expanding their horizons by learning and expanding what they know. Um, other people take a major trip, like an international trip or a major long distance trip um, that also broadens and expands their horizons and, and exposes them to things that they hadn't thought of or hadn't learned previously. Um, other things, it can also be a period where, so learning, travel, um, sometimes beliefs. Uh, the ninth house can represent religion and philosophy and our personal belief systems. And sometimes we can learn new things about the world um, that expand the scope of how we think the world works and what our place is in it. And I think this is one of the most positive transits actually that you're having this year. Um, especially starting in June, there's going to be a bunch of planets moving through Gemini. So I think it's going to be relevant, especially at that point, but even on into the entire second half of uh, 2024, Jupiter is going to be transiting through Gemini. So we'll see a continuation of some of those themes during the second half of this year and on into 2025. So that's definitely one of the most positive transits that I'm most excited about for you this year. Um, all right, so moving on um, another major transit that's happening this year is the planet Mars is going to go retrograde in the signs of Cancer and Leo, which is your 11th house of friends and your 10th house of career. 
So Mars retrogrades can sometimes raise tensions. They can be kind of tense transits that raise tensions in the area of the chart that they go retrograde in. So for you, this is tensions surrounding friends and career. And some of these tensions may be happening separately or independently in terms of having new, new tensions with friends or friend groups or alliances. Um, or they may be happening um, together so that it ties together the topics of both friends and career. So my main piece of advice here is that you should just be careful about starting conflicts with friends at this time, or at least if you do, if it's necessary, because sometimes you have to address things when they come up, um, just to be aware and not to fly off the handle or do anything that you might regret later because sometimes a small conflict started during a Mars retrograde that you think shouldn't last more than a day or two can blow up into a much longer term conflict that has more far-reaching implications than you might anticipate at first. So um, with this transit, some of the worst case scenarios are like severing and separation and loss of friends with Mars in the 11th house. And with Mars in the 10th house, it can mean more conflict at work, um, having clashes with superiors, or even having some sort of severing or separation when it comes to your job and career um, at this time are potentials of that transit and the sort of worst case scenarios. But all of these could be manageable as long as you just go into them um, aware of some of the possibilities and uh, try to exercise caution and restraint as much as you can during this time. So this Mars retrograde transit is happening, especially the last two months of the year is when it really heats up um, and it'll continue a little bit on into next year. All right, so um, those are those main transits. There was one last transit I wanted to mention, which is Pluto's going into the sign of Aquarius this year for a while, and Aquarius is your fifth house of um, uh, children, of um, play, of uh, leisurely activities, uh, creativity. The fifth house also relates to sex and sexuality. So Pluto uh, represents deep transformative experiences in whatever area of the chart that it transits. It's departing from your fourth house where it's been for over a decade, which is the house that has to do with home, family, living situation, and parents. And you're sort of going to be emerging during the course of this year of 2024 from a very long transit of having pretty intense transformative experience when it comes to those topics of home and family. And now the emphasis is going to shift to this other area of children, sexuality, um, and leisurely activities. And you're going to find that some of these topics are going to bring pretty deep transformative experiences into your life. So uh, this may involve things like having children, or if you already have children, things that are going on in the life of your children um, that's important and sort of transformative for you so that you go into it one way and you come out another. Sometimes even just having the process of having children can itself be a transformative experience. And for some people, it'll be as simple as that. Um, for others, since the fifth house relates to sex and sexuality, it can mean having some pretty deep or intense um, relationships or new relationships that come into your life that change uh, your views on sex and sexuality in some sort of profound way. Um, and finally, the last topic that sometimes comes up with the fifth house is like fun and games and leisurely activities, like what you do for fun in order to enjoy life and sort of blow off steam. Um, but some of these topics either becoming more intense for a period or potentially just taking much more of your focus so that maybe there's something you get really into and you decide to go really deep into that um, leisurely activity or that game or what have you just because it... Um, becomes so intensely fascinating to you. So all of this is all right as long as you exercise caution and restraint just because Pluto can sometimes take us or or, or uh, tend to go to extremes. And so whatever you do, if you do get into some new activity that's fun, just try to exercise a little bit of restraint and not go overboard, which might be your initial impulse with that transit. 
All right, so um, those are all the main transits that I wanted to talk about this year. So that is why my primary keywords, just to reiterate once again for this year, are self, relationship, health, money, learn, friends, career, and children. All right, so that is it for this horoscope for 2024. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like a more detailed breakdown of the transits for this year, check out my 2024 year ahead astrology forecast on YouTube. Or if you're looking for good dates to do things next year, for lucky dates to do things, I just recently released my 2024 electional astrology report, which gives fortunate dates for each of the next 12 months over the course of 2024 that you can use to launch different types of ventures and activities. So I'm doing a 15% off sale right now for New Year's, and you can find out more about the report at theastrologypodcast.com slash 2024 report. All right, that's it for this horoscope. So good luck in 2024, Libra, and I'll see you again next year. All right, bye. If you appreciate the work I'm doing here on the podcast and you'd like to find a way to support it, then consider becoming a patron through my page on patreon.com. In exchange, you'll get access to some great subscriber benefits. You can find out more information at patreon.com slash astrology podcast. Shout out to our sponsor for this episode, which is the Chani app the number one astrology app for self-discovery, mindfulness, and healing. You can download it on the Apple App Store or on Google Play, or for more information, visit app.chani.com. Special thanks to all the patrons that helped to support the production of this episode of the podcast through our page on patreon.com. In particular, shout out to the patrons on our producers tier, including patrons Christy Moe, Ariana Amour, Mandy Ray, Angelique Nambo, Issa Sabah, Jake Otero, Jeannie Marie Kaplan, and Melissa Delano. If you're looking for a reliable astrologer to get an astrological consultation with, then we have a new list of astrologers on the podcast website that we recommend for readings. Find out more information at theastrologypodcast.com slash consultations. The astrology software that we use and recommend here on the podcast is called Solar Fire for Windows, which is available for the PC at alabe.com. Use the promo code AP15 to get a 15% discount. For Mac users, we recommend a software program called Astro Gold for Mac OS. You can find out more information at astrogold.io, and you can use the promo code ASTROPODCAST15 to get a 15% discount. If you're really looking to expand your studies of astrology, then I would recommend my Hellenistic Astrology course, which is an online course on ancient astrology where I take people through basic concepts up through intermediate and advanced techniques for reading birth charts. You can find out more information at courses.theastrologyschool.com. And finally, thanks to our sponsors, including The Mountain Astrologer magazine, which is a quarterly astrology magazine which you can read in print or online at mountainastrologer.com. And the Northwest Astrological Conference, which is happening both in person and online May 23rd through the 27th, 2024, you can find out more information at norwac.net.